Welcome to Lemonade Learning, a refreshing look at learning today. We serve up high impact practical strategies alongside honest and energizing stories to help educators. Make the most of your moments, lead and learn with purpose, and craft lifetime lemonade from the sweets and sours of education. Join us for a glass. Hey everybody, it's Bree. And Lainey, welcome. Thank you so much for being here to listen. We've got a great guest. I mean, get the notepad out, whatever, whatever app you're using to take notes, get it ready. Here we go. That's right. Finger on the rewind button. You're going to want to make sure that you're catching down all of the stuff because we have the right leader. We have Vernon Wright from, that's right, Texas, because you know that's how we do things here in Texas. We got to be big. We got to be bold. But let me tell you a little bit about Vernon and then he's going to jump in and explain the rest of it for us. So Vernon is a educator. He's the speaker. He's a leader. He's an entrepreneur. He is a paradigm shifter. And For most of us, we know him as the founder of the Zero Apology Apology Zone, and um, and we kind of want to we're going to unpack some of that and what all that means. But um, I promise you, you are going to want to take notes, and you are going to want to to keep this episode handy today because everywhere Vernon goes, he drops fire and drops um, the truth. And so let's, uh, without further ado, welcome Vernon. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us on Lemonade Learning. Well, wow. What an honor. I, I think after this episode is over, I should get you guys to uh, autograph my digital media player or something, because <laughs> this is a huge, this is a huge honor to be on your show. Love the work uh, that you all are doing. And, you know, I, I want to say this real quick for those that are not only content consumers and listening to this podcast, but also to those that uh, are listening to it. But you, too, may also be a content creator that uh, the number one thing that I tell folks, and just a quick salute, not only to the both of you as very gracious podcast host, but also to, to anyone out there that is a content creator, that authenticity is the number one thing because you cannot connect with people unless they see you as being authentic. But Vernon Wright, as I tell people, unless somebody's changed my name on the birth certificate, uh, entrepreneur, speaker, uh, leader, life coach, uh, consultant. I uh, have my hand in a lot of different things and uh, so grateful and so honored and so blessed to uh, have met so many wonderful, wonderful people. Of course, the both of you being in that camp, so blessed and grateful to be with you all here today. So thank you. Oh my, you are just, I uh, speak about authentic. I mean, just talking to you. In fact, I will, you know, Brie and I are real transparent. The show is not scripted at all. <laughs> and so we popped on and I actually had to like, remember to hit record because we got into this conversation. I was like, no, 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 other people need to hear these things. So, um, so glad you're here. By the way, quick little side note, I have massive uh, microphone envy right now. When you walked in with the full like mic, I was like, this guy is legit. He's got the good equipment. I've like got my little like Amazon special, but um, you sound great. And I can't wait for everyone to hear what you're going to share. So yeah. Well, uh, I would say this, that uh, once upon a time, you know, I was doing the, the mic and the earbuds. So they're levels, right? Yeah. If anybody that's watching or listening to this, I always remember that they're levels. And so I started with different levels. And I remember that, um, Someone that uh, was at a higher level than I uh, was at the time. And that's the way you want your mentors to be. Anyone that you choose to be as a mentor. And this is what I tell people all the time that when you're considering having someone be your uh, mentor or coach, whatever it is you're trying to do, it would be a good idea for them to have demonstrated something, if not being the same, of like kind on a higher level. Okay, so that they can actually speak from that, not from just a place of theory, but a place of uh, practice as well, improving practice. So when I got ready to go ahead and buy this mic, I was like, oh, my goodness, like I like this, this is a little bit of change, man. Like I'm, I never spent any kind of money on a mic like this. This is but you know what? It, uh, thankfully enough, I had mentors that were with me. And they were telling me, hey, Vernon, you're, you're at a certain point, you need to go to another level, you need this, yeah. right? And so here's what, what I was doing, right? And this is a great place if people are taking notes, this is a great, great, great place for you to take notes. I was in a 2020 frame of mind trying to do 2021 moves. Or as I've said to uh, whom you all may know as well, Ken Shelton, uh, shout out to Ken Shelton. 
uh, Ken Shelton and I were talking one day and I said, you know, man, it's like somebody trying to go ahead and perform something um, that is a Windows 10 applicable move with Windows 95 operating system. Like it's just not going to work, right? right? So in other words, I had to change my thinking. I had to shift my paradigm so that I can operate on a higher level. Now, I want to drop this to you real quick. And this is something that a mentor has been sharing with me as we've kind of been working through about the last six months of uh, 2020. And this mentor of mine, he used to live in the Lubbock area. So I, I, although I am not, but if you have any Texas Tech fans out there, guns up. Uh, he is from Lubbock, but uh, he lives here in the Dallas Worth area now. And he and I were talking last night about some different uh, business things. He's in a uh, mentor I have in business. He's not in education. But we've really been talking about this concept, and I want to ask and want to share this question with your audience now, and it's a heavy one, right? And it's simply this. What do you need to become to live out the level that you desire to be? What do you need to become to live out the level you desire to be and the level you feel you're called to? And a lot of different times, you know, when I'm thinking about different things, I, I in my own reflections, which I, I walk every single morning, doesn't matter whether it's raining, doesn't matter whether it's snow, what is matter what the weather is, whether it's hot, cold, whatever it is, I get up very, very early in the mornings and I walk and I have a time of prayer and reflection and uh, visualization and goal setting and a lot of other things that I do every single morning. And it's been an absolute game changer. If people are not doing that, that are part of your audience, it, I'm telling you, it will change. It will change your whole life. It'll change your income, your relationships. It'll change everything. But um, I really, for about for the last six months, have really been asking myself that, okay, Vernon, here's your vision. This is what you're trying to do. This is what's on your vision boards, because I have multiple vision boards in my home. Have you become what you need to be? Have you become the man you need to be to live out the life that's on your vision boards and the life that's in your goal, your goal list? Have you become that man? And if you haven't become that man, what do you need to do to become that man? Oh, Wow. I mean, just start off with something light, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, that's all amazing. Bree, if you want to add anything, let me know. But I do want to take it to a lighter moment just for a minute to ask sure. Vernon his sweet and sour. But Bree, anything to add to that before we shift into sweet and sour? So I will, I will offer this. Um, I've been listening. I just finished it yesterday. Um, a fellow Texan, Matthew McConaughey's green lights, um, his biography and or his autobiography, I should say. And, um, he shares a very similar line of thinking in, in throughout it, his book was created from a compilation of his journals from the time that he was very young, um, all the way until this, you know, the past few years. And, um, and, and within there, he talks over and over again about the goals that he has, um, that he has set. And he didn't, you know, he, there was nothing that kind of created that circumstance for him. It was just one of those things where he, you know, just wrote those things down. And, um, and, and so it, it really sits with me, you know, thinking through that book, which I highly recommend, um, specifically on audible, cause you get to feel like you're driving or walking around with Matthew. And I mean, that's kind of a cool thing anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> But uh, I also, um, one of the things that, that I, you know, after thinking about that and after listening to you, Vernon, um, I don't think that we often enough in our own lives give um, enough credence to being intentional with our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, a lot of times we'll shrug it off of like, oh, well that just happened or, or, you know, and, and it's often done in an effort to be humble. And um, which I, I, I'm a huge fan of humble. I'm a huge fan of, of humility. Um, that said, uh, there's, there's, there's oftentimes, um, you know, we, we do ourselves a huge disservice when we make it seem like it was on accident that this came to be like, it wasn't luck. It wasn't, um, it wasn't just, you know, something that, that fell out of the sky. It was a lot of intentional work towards getting to those moments. And, um, and I, I think that, you know, I, I have a feeling in this episode, we're going to connect a lot of that um, coming through because we have to be very intentional with our education, which would be very intentional with, you know, our, our leadership, all of these moments. Um, 
And it begins by setting that outcome that you want and then putting into place those things that have to happen. So um, thank you for, you know, just really opening our minds in that. So right. that said, before I know you're, I'm going to jump in because I know that you could just like tee off and go. But oh, I'm I could, stop. I could again. I know. I know I'm going to try to, the, your audience is going to be like, don't invite that right guy anymore. That guy's terrible. No, he doesn't follow, it. he doesn't follow the show outline. This guy no, is terrible. We, hey. Well, the show out no, like we, <laughs> we embrace we embrace the rogue we embrace the rebellion that said one of our our cornerstones here on the podcast is to talk through our sweet and our sour and you can choose whatever order you want to go in and you can pick professional personal or combination of all of the above but um let us know what's what's something sweet what's something sour that's happening yeah um, or sour well and sweet what an honor to uh, to speak to the cornerstone of what is your show, right? <laughs> I'm going to try to go ahead and stick to the format here because your yeah. your listeners are going to be like, "This right guy, man, get this guy out of here." But um, you him. know, the sweet for me has been my my authentic connections with people, and you, you know, I know that we mentioned uh, I shared with your uh, audience connect impact scale, and we'll, of course, hopefully we'll have time to to dig deeper into that in a little bit. But the authentic the authentic connections with people. And I want to say something here real quick that ties into with this suite uh, and what I have shared with you all that ties into what you just said before about being intentional and there really being no thing uh, such as quote unquote coincidence, right? Which I am a huge absolute believer of. So I had um, on my vision board and I had on my goals list to speak somewhere outside of state. So I'd had that on my mind for a while, right? So uh, lo and behold, uh, through a few different connections and people that I've come to know, I had this opportunity to speak in New Jersey. And when I had this opportunity to speak in New Jersey, lo and behold, this person that I had seen quite a bit of, but had never met in person was this guy. Some of your listeners may know this, this guy, I don't know. He's kind of obscure, this guy named Tom Murray. And, uh, when I met Tom Murray, I had the opportunity as a fellow speaker, uh, at that conference to see Tom Murray uh, keynote and then had the opportunity to go ahead and do, of course, as Tom is, is absolutely uh, phenomenal and famous for doing a one minute leadership video with him. And I often think to myself, you know, and, and right now, if your listeners are taking notes, a wonderful place to take notes. I often ask myself in my, my daily reflection time, Vernon, what if you had said, you know what? Um, I'm just going to stay down here in Texas. I'm not going to travel to New Jersey. Actually flew into Philadelphia and then drove from Philadelphia into New Jersey. And uh, what had happened? What, what would have happened? What if you had said no? But I was so absolutely, and I get so excited, I have to, I have to calm down so that your listeners are not like, this. there's like, oh, is that right, guy? Breaking rules again. But I, at the time, was so absolutely committed I became so, which is, which is my one word as I'm closing 2020, my one word that I started 2020 with was elevation, but my, my one word that I've had about the last seven or eight months has been uh, immerse and immersion. Mm -hmm. I became so immersed in what I was doing and my vision and my calling that when the opportunity presented itself, the only thing I said to myself was, it's go time. Because what I always coach my clients on is this. They say, you know, Vernon, I'm praying for this. I'm, I've been believing for this. And my goal, this is on my goal list for this. And what I always say to them and ask them is this. If the door opened tomorrow, would you be ready to walk through it? So that one act, that one thing of saying, you know what? I'm going to New Jersey. I'd never even been to New Jersey before. Um, but people that are veterans of New Jersey or have lived in New Jersey or live in New Jersey now, they will they will get a kick out of this. I was driving past because I was in a rental car, right? I was driving past this gas station convenience store and it was called Wawa, like W-A-W-A. -A. And I was like, what is a Wawa? We do not have Wawas in Texas. And uh, I didn't know I didn't know that. Right. So here I was in totally out of my element. But I was so committed that I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And that one act propel me forward. And I got to meet so many people in person that I had only dreamed of seeing in person that I had read their books. I read the material, Beth Huff, one half of lead like a pirate, got to meet her, spend time with her. Jay Billy, uh, another 
uh, Dave Burgess, consulting author, got to sit with Jay Billy, and you would have thought he and I had known each other for 10 or 15 years. Phenomenal people, right? But what if I had stayed home in Texas? Yeah. None of that would have ever happened. So the sweet part is a connection. Here's the sour part. And the sour part is really this, and it is something that connects to the sweet. And I know I'm probably not following the rules when I do this. There are but, no the, rules. Uh, <laughs> but the sour part is seeing people that settle for much less than they know they should mm. in their lives. That's the sour part. Yeah. But the sweet that we put on the sour is when I connect with those people and I get them to, as a mentor shared with me so many years ago, I got them to pick up the dream that they put on the shelf. Some of them have been around wrong, the wrong people, the wrong associates. They've been around people who verbally abuse them. Some of them physically have been physically abused. And they had just come to the point where they said, you know what, Vernon, it's over. I have, I have become quote unquote content, which is code, code for a, a, a euphemism for I'm just going to settle and quit. I've become content with this life I have. I really shouldn't be expecting anything more. And, you know, I, I will share this with you all. It's, it's a sour story that is turning into a sweet one. There's someone that I'm coaching here locally, the Dallas Fort Worth Mer Metroplex. And uh, this person has a goal of being a professional counselor. And of course, down here in Texas, of course, it's different in different states. They have licensing agencies, so forth and so on. You have to pass test, all that good, kind of good stuff. This person took the test and failed it. Okay. And uh, they just said, you know what, Vernon, I, I failed it. I couldn't do it. Like, that's it. I I'm done. Right. I'm just going to go over here and do this other nine to five job. And I'm going to be quote unquote content again, euphemistic for I'm going to settle and quit on myself and say no to myself and really say no to my future. And I asked this person, we were in conversation. Right. And I asked them, I said, have you ever thought about all the people in the future that are waiting to meet you? That are waiting to go ahead and have you help them. Have you ever thought about that? And the person looked at me and they said, well, no, not really. And this is what I said to them. And shout out to my man, uh, Tim Cavey, Teachers on Fire podcast. Love him. Great guy. I shared this on his podcast back in November of 2019, about a year or so ago. I shared this with this client of mine. I said, there are people in the future that have questions and you're the answer. So that is, that is the sour and it's turning into sweet because I have encouraged this person to pick up that dream pick it up off the shelf and just start taking these next steps. Or as one of my mentors says, take the next right step. So that's my sweet and sour. I love it. Thank you. And again, we're very unstructured here, but we do love to ask that sweet and sour because we find that it kind of gets pretty quickly to the heart of what people are really thinking about right now. And so I really love that, that your sweet is the connection. And then the sour is, almost make the best of those connections. Like you have the potential. And I think, um, I think we've all seen through this pandemic that there've been opportunities to make new connections. I mean, this podcast with Bree, this, this is a result of um, a tragedy, but something good came out of it. So I really appreciate that. Absolutely. And I want to say this, you know, a lot of people have asked me and I'm so humbled and so grateful to have appeared on a uh, different podcast before, and uh, people have asked me, you know, Vernon, when you started to, you know, really, really elevate and you started to make moves and you started to, your impact started to grow, your reach, your influence started to grow. Like, what were some of the things you were doing in your personal life? And uh, another great place to take notes, if people are watching and taking notes, I became very particular about whom I spent time around professionally and personally. Very, very particular about that, because what, as one of my mentors says, I understood that at that time, as I was starting to increase and I was starting to, to scale, that it was a period that he calls separation season. And separation season, meaning this, in order for me to elevate and to be the person I needed to be and to reach the people I needed to do, I had to separate myself from foolishness. So if it was, if I was hanging around foolish people or people that didn't want to do anything in order for me to fulfill my calling, because my calling is on a level higher than I am currently. That's why it's a calling and a vision. And we're called to live that out. So I, I couldn't be hanging around people that really didn't have a vision and didn't want to do anything because they would hinder me. They would hinder my thought process. They would hinder 
my vision. They would hinder all of these different things that are necessary for me to have to go to that next level. So when I started getting around people that were successful people and I started asking them, what's your life like? Talk to me about your life. One of the things I found was they were very particular about whom they spend time with professionally and personally. And when, I, when you start hanging around people that have a vision, their vision doesn't even have to be the same as yours, but just the very act of having a vision, you will become elevated, most definitely. Absolutely. They totally inspire you. Bree, I want to hear some of your thoughts. What are you thinking? I, I mean, I, I think, again, it's just that it's, it's the recurring, um, you know, it's the, it's the recurring theme of intentionality, right? And everything has, is very intentional and we have to be intentional about our work. We have to be intentional about um, the, uh, the energy that we give into others, as well as the energy that we take um, away from others. I mean, last night I was um, laying with my daughter as she was getting ready to go to bed and um, she is in third grade and you know, third grade, eight year old problems, right? Like she, she had this thing. And, and when I came in last night, she was like, I, I want to talk to you. And I said, okay, well, let's talk. And she was like, no, 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 it's not the time. And so last night, right. But, you know, as, as she's got her jammies on and we're, we're getting ready to, to lay down was the time. And so she was telling me about, um, you know, some, uh, that, that there was, um, there were some kids in her class that were saying things about, um, other kids and, and, you know, just typical kind of, eight-year-old type situations, eight and nine-year-old type situations. And, and we were talking through um, about how I said, you know, I think you, you've been given a lot of really good advice from your teacher and from, um, and, and, you know, help me. I just want to remind you that um, once you have shared that information with other people like your teacher, then you have to trust that they're going to, to do the things that they've told you they're going to do. Right. So honor that, let go of it. Right. Like don't hold on to it, let go of that, let it be in her hands now. And I said, and then also don't let, you know, don't let the circumstances that um, are, are around you change who you are internally. Right. Like, so, you know, just because somebody says, that they're saying, you know, if they say something about you that you know to not be true, don't feed into it and then in turn make it true, right? Like just continue to be, to be, um, to be the person that you are. And I, I shared with her that uh, a good friend of mine um, who my daughter actually got to meet last year, she was like one of the very last people that we got to see before the whole world stopped um, mm -hmm. was uh, or is Audrey um, Eau Claire. And uh, we, we had spent a couple of days with her family in, um, in Maine. And Audrey had shared with me when my, my son was having a hard time a few years ago that um, helped, or excuse me, hurt people, hurt people, right? And so we have to facts right remind there. ourselves that, facts. that if somebody is hurting, then they oftentimes will then reach out and try to hurt somebody else. And, um, and I told her, I said, you know, this time of year is, is oftentimes difficult for kids um, or difficult for families. Like if they're having a hard time with something, and especially if it's, you know, uh, if, if it's difficult for, for the family, then it's going to really be difficult for, um, for the, some of the kiddos. And so you got to remember that if they're having a hard time, then, um, you know, that's going to show sometimes by giving other people a hard time. And I said, but to me, the opposite of that is equally true. And so you've got to really, you know, believe that helped people will help people as well. And I said, so, you know, find in yourself to not, let this change you, but instead help other people and keep being the same way because that will actually help them kind of, you know, keep and an, keep a mindset that, that there are those helpers out in the world and, and things are going to be okay. And so with that, I, I, I kind of want to pose a question to you, Vernon, because I think that this is one of those things that, you know, listening to you, you talk and, and talking about the, the elevation and, you know, being around, being very intentional, being very particular about who you're going to be around. Um, I also think I know you well enough to know that that doesn't mean that you just like ditch your people, right? Like, it's not like all of a sudden you look at them and you're like, yeah, no, I'm done with you. Right. And so I, th I think that, that I would like for you to kind of give us some tips or some insight or, you know, how do you maintain relationships and still improve and, um, you know, build into lean into your, your calling, um, and not just make it, 
seem like, okay, well, I'm, I'm only about elevating myself and I'm only about, you know, like being this mastermind of, of using people to get where I want to go. Cause I know that that's not um, your intention in those comments. Yeah. So um, yeah. yeah. Can you kind of would a little love to that? speak to that? Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is really ask your um, audience to really get their mind around a term. And it's, this is a very uh, nebulous term. It's a, it's a, term that's very common. And so I want them to get their minds around the term community, community. Okay. And uh, different speaking engagements that I've done, I, I often ask people, what does community mean to you? And people will respond, you know, the people that live in our neighborhood, so forth, so on, so forth, so on. So what I share with people is, and especially with the clients that I coach one-on-one, Every single human being has two identities. They have an individual identity and then they have a collective identity. Okay. So as an individual, that's however you are hardwired, right? If we have any MBTI fans out there, Myers-Briggs type indicator, I'm a huge MBTI fan. I'm an ENFJ, by the way. Uh, you know, if there are any uh, other ENFJs out there, woo -woo, you know, a little shout out to you there. And, uh, and so, but, um, my phone there. Let me go ahead. I was like, I was looking phone. around. I'm like, what device is yeah, that? Yeah, that's my phone. That's my phone buzzing, right? I should have turned my Usually phone off. Like See, I told, I told you guys, I break, I break all the rules. No, I should have turned no, my no, phone off, right? We're good. We're but good. Um, one of the things that that I do is, um, and I highly recommend this. I recommend this to my clients, and I recommend this to your listeners as well, your audience. Find out what your MBTI is. Find out there's 16 archetypes. Find out which one of the 16 you are. Okay. Now that, that helps you to gain awareness on your uh, self, right? Your individual identity, self-awareness. Then when we start talking about community, community is really uh, this concept of all of the different people that we connect with, right? Mm -hmm. So we're connecting with so many different people all of the time we are, right? And again, remember, there's so many people out there that have questions and each one of us utilizing our own unique gifts and talents, we are the answer that is custom made for those questions. So when we're, we are in all of these different circles, we're interacting with people, right? We're interacting with them, we're adding value, we're helping to elevate people. However, I will share with you all what a mentor once shared with me. And he asked me this, Vernon, he said, Vernon, um, <laughs> two questions he asked me. He said, um, if somebody needs money, can you help them if you're broke? And I said, uh, no, sir. And he said, okay. And then the second question he asked me is this, can you pour water into someone else out of an empty container? I said, no, sir. And he said, the reason why I asked you those two questions, Vernon, is for you to understand that in order for you to elevate people and to pour into people, someone must pour into you. And so in order for us, and I want to say this here right now, there are some people that are listening to this, whether you're listening to this in 2020, whether you're listening to this in 2021 or 2031, <laughs> whenever you're listening to this, right? There are people right now that are listening to this and your next level, part of your next level is going to be around people that refresh and energize and pour into you so you can pour into others. And when we talk about really elevating and being around people that, that um, you know, have, have a vision like we do and they're wanting to really be ambitious and do some things, we're talking about community and we're talking about community in a sense of people that pour into us. Because remember, if we're empty and we don't have anything, it doesn't matter how much we want to pour into some, we can't pour into anyone else. So I'll give you an example with this podcast. There are people that are connecting with this podcast. Maybe some that are connecting um, with this podcast because uh, maybe they're associated with me or know me. There may be some people um, accessing this podcast that are familiar with you all but are not with me. So you have all these people accessing this podcast, right? And our desire collectively between the three of us is that they get something of great value from listening to this, right? I was explaining this last night to a group of people. It's what's called a value proposition. So I want them to get great value from this. Well, as they get great value from this, they are then hopefully going to do what? They're going to share with someone. Hey, I was listening to this podcast the other day. 
Uh, and let me share this with you that I heard, and it really meant something deep to me. Maybe it'll mean something deep to you. Maybe it's something you can use in your life. So we have to have those circles and those places that fill us, that re-energize us so that we can do the same for other people. Because if we are not cognizant, and I really love you know, that one word again about being intentional. If we're not intentional about being in this, these spaces where people are pouring into us, where we can get filled, then we won't have anything to pour into other people. So all of our circles do not have to be circles where we're looking for those to pour into us. And really they shouldn't be all of your circles shouldn't be where you're looking for people to pour into you because some of your circles should be circles where you're looking to pour into other people. Here's how you know that your work is taking on scale. When your work is taking on scale, because you might be like, you know, Vernon, nobody's listening to me. I don't think anybody's even concerned about what I'm doing, right? When your work starts to take on scale and you know it, you'll be able to say this to yourself. I started out with this work is just something for me to do and maybe to help a few other people. But now this work has become so much bigger than what I intended or what I thought it could be. And that's when your work and your impact has reached scale on whatever level scale, quote unquote scale means for you and your work. And that's what gets really, really exciting because then you are driven by that work because it allows you to impact people. Wow. I mean, <laughs> Mic drop. Probably a very like long answer. It. They're like, I told you, get this right guy off of there. No, y'all. we love it. We love it. We lo <laughs> it really, this, we love it. This is so perfect. Um, and for me, you're refreshing and pouring into me right now because this is the stuff that I need to hear. Even if I may at some level know these things, it doesn't mean I don't want to hear it over and over again. Like I, I could listen to this episode over and over again because you're, you're giving me that courage to make those, you know, every day we're making these choices to put our work out there. Um, and that's not an easy thing to do, but, but I think your message is clear. Um, and I also love that idea of building capacity. Um, you're using the word scale. I love that. I love that. So yeah. I and so if there are people out there within the, and I know that obviously, um, uh, a significant portion of your audience is from the world of education, but I, there may be people listening to this from other sectors as well. But those in from an education background in that sector, in that profession, especially those that are in leadership, this ties into something that in those circles we call distributed leadership, the distributed leadership model. So in other words, I'm not trying to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. I'm utilizing and leveraging all of the different talents uh, uh, and capacities of those that are in community with me. Now, we don't say that we're in community together. Typically, in a, in a professional sense, we would say we are a quote unquote team, yeah. but a team is community. Community is a really great um, word that I really like to use. Obviously, you, you guys have, have seen me already use that a few different times. Because community allows us to really have a perspective of two things, many things, obviously, but two things. One, looking at how we come together, but then two, looking beyond and having a bigger perspective of things. And I want to say this real quick to those, again, that are taking that step of, of faith. Uh, I started out on Twitter, and I, and I posted this picture before. I started out on Twitter, and I took a screenshot of it really as a joke to myself, right? And I was like, I'm starting out on Twitter and uh, where will this thing go? Who knows? This part thing probably won't go anywhere, right? That was the joke to myself. And the screenshot shows me with 15 followers. And in the background, those that, are, that, that follow me on Twitter, they can go and they can find the picture on Twitter. Um, but the background, some may not know this, the background is actually downtown Dallas. The streets of downtown Dallas is the background of my banner picture. And um, I started out with 15 followers, 15. I took a screenshot of that. And uh, now I think oh, my account's almost like 7,300 or something around that area. And I'm telling you, folks, you again, and I said this before and I will say it again, there are many people with questions and you are the answer. If you don't take that step, you're going to leave someone with their questions unanswered. Oh my goodness. I'm going to, I know we have to start to wrap up to let you go, but I just want to say that one thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately, especially in the beginning of the year, we talk a lot about building community, right? That's so important. But 
just as important as maintaining that community. And so I think everything you're saying feeds into that, that we have to continue to build these relationships. We have to continue to nurture these relationships. I love that you've grown your PLN on Twitter. That's something that that I have not been as intentional about in the past. It's something I've been trying to focus on more now because we can't get together at these conferences. And so how can we build that community regardless of location? And so and can I'm, I say something real quick, just super quick? Uh, yes, I have built on Twitter and continuing to build on Twitter. Those that might be listening to this and might be fans of branding and marketing, uh, I have started to shift some and I am starting to build my IG platform. Ooh, so crazy. those that, so those, right. So those that, uh, and I'm out there on Facebook as well, but those that may want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, at sign the right leader all together, but I'm starting to work on Instagram and starting to build uh, my brand through Instagram because Instagram has a different uh, vehicle and how to reach people and capture people. It shows our lifestyle and you guys have seen some of my posts uh, on Instagram. So it shows our lifestyles uh, and who we are, the people behind, you know, this person on Twitter or this person I went to see at a conference, I get to see the personal parts of, of who they are behind the scenes. Uh, and it's cool. Really, really cool. I love it. I love it. Bree, any final thoughts before, I mean, I could talk to Vernon for hours <laughs> easily, but <laughs> I, I, I love it. I mean, I think I think for me, the biggest piece in this and again, you know, all three of us share um, share a common friend in Tom. And I, I will say as a side note, that's actually how Vernon and I met. Right. Tom had called me and was like, hey, do you know, do you know Vernon? Right. And I was like, no. And he was like, well, I mean, he's Texas. And I was like, I mean, it's a big state. But OK, <laughs> thanks for thinking that I know every single person I'm from Texas. And um, and, you know, this was this was a couple years back. And uh, and and the rest is history. You know, Vernon and I connected and then realized, oh, my gosh, we're actually a lot closer than um, than I originally thought and, and all that stuff. But to, to borrow a phrase, um, that Tom uses a lot is talking about leaders, leaders, ver leaders of title versus leaders of action. Right. And I mm. think that that is one of those pieces that I hear you say, um, you know, not, not necessarily by that phrase, but in the words that you've shared with us is that you don't have to be a leader um, quote unquote by your business card, right? Like we are leading in our lives in, in every direction, whether it's in business, whether it's in education, whether it's in the home, whether it's, uh, you know, as a, as a, as a student, whatever that looks like, we are constantly leading our lives and, and influencing and impacting those that are around us. And I, I love your commitment to community and, and talking about how we have to invest in our surroundings and our environment and then the people that are, that are living there as well as give to them, right? Like it's, it's a, that continual uh, organism where we're all dependent upon each other. And I think that it's such a, such a great reminder that, you know, if we put on our teacher hat, if we put on that educator lens of in the classroom, we recognize our students are at all different levels, right? And, um, and, and some of them have, uh, have, have certain strengths that others might not have and, and vice versa. And we don't seal off their learning based off of what their strength is, right? Like we lean into that and we help them exemplify and and, and leverage that strength in order to continue to grow. And I think that that's one of those big pieces in this conversation is, um, you know, leading is doesn't mean leaving, right? Like leading doesn't mean that you're going beyond those people that are around you. It means that you are, you know, leading a, um, a pathway or you are, you're going to a place that is different from where you're at right now. And, um, and, and hopefully we recognize that we've got to take a lot of people with us in order to, to make that journey worthwhile. And, and so that's, I just, that's the, that's the reason why, and I'm going to say this to people that are in the midst of scaling right now, whether you're scaling offline and in your business and consulting or things like that. Uh, and I'm in some of those spaces too, or whether you're scaling online, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, what have you, once you start to scale, please understand that really there is a moral imperative and in some cases, maybe even an unspoken one, but there is a moral imperative. And I'm absolutely a joking kid around a lot, but I'm absolutely serious about this professionally and personally in both realms of my life. 
when we have platforms, we have an obligation and a duty to elevate others that are truly well, I, ready to elevate themselves. We uh, that, absolutely. And I, I tell people all the time, they're like, man, you have a lot of followers on, on, uh, on Twitter or whatever. It's a platform for me. And I am absolutely, I'm absolutely, absolutely. And can I throw in a tip real quick? I'm closing now. I'm going to throw in a tip real quick. All right. So here's something people can do to elevate someone else with their PLN right now, this second. And I've done this, you know, with my brand zero apology zone.com. Um, I will pick someone that, you know, they've ordered a shirt of mine or whatever, or a hat or a beanie or what have you. And uh, I'll just feature them randomly. And I'll say, hey, here's a shout out. Shout out to this person. They're a principal. They're a teacher. They're a whatever. Shout out. If you're not following them, following them right now, I love their work. Cost zero dollars, folks. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you every single time that I've done that, people have been like, wow, Vernon, like I didn't expect that. And I was like, that's exactly why I did it. With no, and with nothing, with nothing, us. right. With nothing, absolutely. With nothing in return, it's, with nothing, expecting nothing in return, because I know one of the laws of life is this. If I pour into other people, I will get poured into, or as Zig Ziglar, the great late Zig Ziglar said, I can get everything I want in life. If I just help enough other people get what they want in life. Oh, I love that. That's a great like said, way to end. Free, what do you want to add before we have the, the, the last thing that I want to add is just, you know, keeping in mind that I know we're spending a lot of time talking about leadership, but keep in mind these things are scalable wherever you're at. I mean, same thing. You're in the classroom. What a wonderful way to choose a student and elevate their work and say, you know, oh my goodness, um, Samantha, I just, I, I really appreciate how much intensity you gave to that assignment and your focus was spot on, right? Like somebody who hasn't heard that a lot, right? Like just, it, it doesn't take anything um, and it, it builds them up and it helps that person see themselves in a way that they haven't necessarily been applauded for. And, and I think that that is so important, right? By, you know, play that forward. Same thing in a leadership role, like building that in there. And, you know, the last part of that, you know, bringing that back into the classroom, because I know we have a lot of, of, of teachers and, and educators who are still in the classroom that are, that are listening out there. Don't think that the only platforms you have are social media platforms, right? Like you have those same platforms, whether it is a community building um, parent notification app that you might have, maybe it is, you know, what your, your capacity to build connection and to leverage the learning that's happening in your classroom doesn't solely have to happen on social media, right? Like you can build that um, through so many other ways online with your own students and with their families to help, you know, kind of keep things going. And so uh, I just wanted to, to bring that in and make sure that we were very intentional about um, making sure people, you know, think through that, that because so often, and, and I see it all the time, right, that we, oh, I'm just a teacher or, oh, I'm just this and I don't have, I don't have that following or I don't have that place or I don't have that, um, um, opportunity. But the fact of the matter is, is that every single one of us has that opportunity to make a little video and send it to the families of your, of your students and let them know how, how hard they've been working and, um, and don't apologize for it and keep moving forward and, and build that up. So thank it. you. Thank you for letting me add that in there. Cause I wanted to make sure we got that. Vernon, you have given us an inspiring call to action. I will be listening to this episode because I want to, I already took notes by the way, but I will be listening again. And I just really thank you. I know on behalf of Bree, you have like refreshed us and filled our cup. And so we thank you, thank you, thank you. Everyone, we, for those who are watching, we will have uh, Vernon's social media handle on the frame. For those of you that are listening and Apple podcast or whatever your, whatever your distribution is, in the show notes, we'll have all the stuff about Vernon so we can make sure you find him. And thank you for listening, Vernon. Thank you for being here. Such a pleasure. What an honor. What an honor and what a pleasure. And I want to say this to folks real quick. My life changed on the outside when I changed on the inside. And what one of the things that changed on the inside is when I became fully committed to the vision for my life. I love that. Oh my gosh. I am, I've got just the warm fuzzies all over. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for listening. Wonderful. Thank y'all. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks Vernon. We appreciate you. Thank you.
If you enjoyed this batch of Lemonade Learning, please check out our website, LemonadeLearning.us for more resources. Be sure to subscribe today so you don't miss out on future lessons, laughter, or lemonade. And if you're feeling really generous, please go to Apple Podcasts to submit a review so other educators know the value. One last thing, learning and lemonade are best together. So please connect with us on social media using the hashtag LemonadeLearning to share your story. Plus, we're always looking to give away stickers and swag.